Gentlemen, great talking to you. And I should also point out that I'm mad at both of you guys. You know why, because <laughs> finding, <laughs> you know, <laughs> finding out about what was going on with the Juno Awards and the fact that I talked to you many a time. Actually, oh. I talked to both of you guys many a time and then finding out that the CBC has the Juno Awards. I mean, what an exciting uh, news for everybody in music up here in Canada. Yeah, some things we got to keep secret for a while. But uh, yeah, look, really, we're thrilled. Uh, you know, the Juno's coming back to CBC. Um, this was our original home for over 30 years. And, you know, CTV was a great partner for us for 16 years. But Mark came to me with a, a concept about it not just being about the Juno Awards, it was how can CBC help elevate Canadian artists throughout the entire year? And that's really what this is all about, is yes, we're super proud to have the broadcast here, but also CBC partnering with Keras to help us elevate music education, the Hall of Fame, and just basically helping artists all around throughout the course of the year. You know, that's always been the thing about CBC, especially with cbcmusic.ca. Uh, it's all about, it's not about uh, top 40 artists all the time, but it's about Canadian artists trying to reach a certain plateau, and CBC's always been there for them. Well, that's it. Um, we're really proud to not only, you know, reflect what the top 40 are doing, but we're also giving voice to many, many composers, musicians, uh, ensembles, bands across this country in multiple genres, we're giving them a voice, uh, regardless of what platform they're on. Um, so, you know, we do that all year, and we're obviously Canadian focused. Um, so, you know, every year I was saying to Alan, every year I'd go to the Junos on the road and I'd watch this amazing show, and I was thinking, you know, celebrating Canadian music, it was the Canadian music night of the year, and I always felt oh wait, you know, I'd like to have that night. I'd like to be part of that night for CBC because uh, that's what we do all year. So, and as to, to Alan's uh, point, you know, we can leverage some of the things that we do all year um, and give voice to the nominees, for example, give more sort of focus, shine a light on the nominees, the Hall of Fame, all the other things that they do and work in partnership and help bring maybe more audience as we do that all year to the Juno Awards itself. Okay, but let's look at reality. Did you think you were going to be able to pull off this coup? Because like I said, it was, it, uh, when I told a lot of people about this, they were like, what? Really? It's going back? Really? Well, it was, it's, you know, a lot of things in life is lucky. I mean, the timing just happened to be right, but yeah, I thought so. Well, that was good, man. You thought it and you did it. But more importantly, though, um, I know we had talked before, this isn't going to be just about a week event. This isn't going to be just like a weekend event. You guys are really looking like almost like year round kind of. Yeah, it, honestly, you know, when, when we sat down, the alignment uh, between our mandates is perfect. The Juno's whole goal is to elevate and celebrate Canadian artists. It's exactly what CBC does. And we have a huge uh, stake in the ground around music education as well with Music Counts, our charity. That equally has always been a partnership actually between CBC and Music Counts for years now with the Great Canadian Music Class Challenge. And that's also a key pillar for, for CBC and what they represent. And so to bring those things to life throughout the course of the year and have a partner who's going to elevate those things for us, that's really, really exciting for us. Okay, so can you give us some hints on some of the surprises that we may be able to get involved with throughout the year? No. Well, <laughs> let me. You know, the, the uh, we're honestly, we're, uh, we got, you know, we've announced um, we're, our creative teams are now starting to get together to talk about the, what could be. Um, the Great Canadian Music Class Challenge. It's run for two years. It will expand out. It'll it'll become more bigger. Um, there are other things we're t having conversations about the Hall of Fame. We're having conversations about the Song Circle. We're having uh, about the nominees when they're announced. What can we do? Uh, and there are other things that are coming. Um, too early to talk about, but I'm. I th I th I'm really, really excited about what they are and what they could become. So people are probably going to be thinking that once we hit Vancouver next year, um, is this going to be a whole different look, a whole different feel? Like, what is it going to be? No, not really. I think that, you know, when we first started talking about this, the, the Juno show has been very, very successful, and Insight Productions, who is our producer, is staying on with us. Um, so I don't think you're going to see a massive change in the way the show looks. I think there, you know, has potential to be maybe some more diversity within the show itself. Um, but I think really it's about, besides the show, what else will happen around both Juno Week, but more importantly throughout the course of the year. Okay, and last question. It's been a while since it's come back to Toronto. Any thoughts that Toronto could be a hot spot uh, in the next couple of years? That's an Alan Reed question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Mark Sun. No, it's not. <laughs> 
No, look, we would love to come back to Toronto. This is a fantastic home. And this is also part of CBC's appeal with us was we travel this country and CBC is a national broadcaster and what they do so well is they are in all these cities locally and are so strong locally. And so that's been part of our appeal is we take, you know, the Junos to different cities across this country and the narrative has also changed. It's, it's changed with government. You know, government now wants to talk about music city strategies and how music can actually be a, a job creator and how governments can use arts and culture as a key platform for them and it's a, it's a business driver so we love taking this this big celebration across the country engaging local artists raising that local music scene up as well but there's no better place than right here in toronto like this is a fantastic city with a incredible music scene so i think you'll see us coming back Okay, looking forward to it. I know you guys got more interviews to do, but I gotta say thank you so much and congratulations on this new venture. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks very much, Rudy.